Good morning, SCA family. Hope you had a great weekend. It's a short week this week as Friday is a school closure day. So just a reminder that the school office will be closed on Friday and then it's the long weekend and Monday is off as well. And hopefully after that, the provincial restrictions will be lifted and we'll get to see everyone back here in school again. Wow, a lot of staffing changes going on here next year. And in case you missed the announcements, I just want to review uh, some of the new people who are coming here. So Mr. Spronk will be the principal next year. Many of you remember Mr. Spronk from his time here when he was an assistant principal here, and we are delighted to have him back here at SCA. Our junior high assistant principal for next year will be Mrs. Arzate. Mrs. Arzate comes to us from Fort Christian, and so we're very excited to have another individual join us with a strong passion for Christian education. Last week, it was also announced that Mrs. Lennox will be the assistant principal at Fort Christian next year. And so I know Mrs. Lennox will be deeply missed here at SEA as uh, she's made so many great relationships with so many people, but we're really excited for her for this new opportunity. And I know the students at Fort Christian are just going to love having her there. We're continuing to work through some other staffing pieces for next year, so stay tuned for more updates. Before I turn it over to Pastor Jordy, I just want to thank one of our Bible 8 classes for all the encouragement cards that they made our staff. You can see my card here and uh, had a cute little picture and a thank you and a really nice uh, heartfelt note on the inside of it as well. This has been a hard year for everyone, for students, for families, and for staff. And so just to have those encouragement notes from our students, uh, encouraging us, thanking, thanking staff for all their hard work that the staff have put in. Uh, wow, that really meant a lot. So thank you very much, grade eight class, for doing that for our staff. I know it was uh, very well received and our staff really appreciated those kind of words. Thank you so much. SCA, hope you have a great week. Now over to Pastor Jordy. Thanks, Mr. E. Good day, SCA family. I hope you're having a good day so far. Just still waking up, some of you, I think. So it's uh, May 17th, 2021. So cases are high still, uh, but going down, I, I think. I think uh, more, uh, more and more people are getting back. So it's great. Uh, in fact, the entire United States last week just relaxed their mask wearing rule for some people. Uh, not here yet. Hang in there. Our grad went from five people to 10 people, Mr. Murder tells me. So that's pretty cool. Only 28 days left in actual school till the summer. Very cool. It's great weather out. Great weather out. Uh, remember minus 30? Yeah, it's great weather out, isn't it? Things are looking good. Things are looking good. You know, it's uh, also today, There, it's a whole bunch of famous people's birthdays, uh, of course. You know, like uh, Jordan Knight. You know him? Probably not. He's 50 today. You don't know him? New kids on the block, guys, like legendary boy band, 80s, 90s. Okay, he's 50 today. I can't believe it. Enya, you know her? Legend as well. Irish singer. She's 59 today. She, a beautiful voice, very relaxing. Check her out. Enya, E-N-Y-A. It's something to kind of relax before you go to bed, guaranteed. Uh, lots, of course, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok stars. Uh, don't know them. Probably should have checked them out, but uh, Antonio Willis, 19, Christy Scott's 25. So happy birthday to all the famous people. Hey, as I was looking through May 17th, kind of just for fun, I I noticed a couple of things, maybe on a smaller scale, whatever. Uh, in 1989, it was the longest cab ride in history took place. 22,500 and a bit kilometers. Over $19,000 it cost. So there's obviously a story to that. You should check it out. Longest cab ride, 1989. Hey, 1975, Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. Well, he actually punches a restaurant window and gets 20 stitches. I don't know what's what happened there, what went on there. But, you know, that's what happened in May 17th in history. So, you know, fun to know. Maybe just for nothing. Not really a big deal. But, you know, as I was looking through, here's here's a bigger deal for sure. In the States on May 17th, 1954, there was a major, major civil rights victory won in the Brown versus Board of Education case in Topeka, Kansas. The U.S. Supreme Court unanimously brought an end to racial segregation in public education facilities. That's very cool. 
Here's one that got me reflecting on my week. Fluke? Coincidence? I don't know. I think maybe more. On this day in 2004 in Massachusetts in the States, it, uh, it became the first state to legalize the same-sex marriage. Okay, so I'm not going down the controversial road, but just to say that reading that reminded me of the webinar I actually participated in or signed up for and watched this week. And uh, some other people did as well. It was called Sexuality and the Gospel, An Evening with Jackie Hill Perry. So Jackie's a Christian. She's a wife, a mother, a poet, a hip-hop artist, a writer, a speaker, and has an amazing testimony about meeting Jesus while living as a lesbian. Jackie is the author of Gay Girl, Good God, and has become an outspoken voice in boldly proclaiming the centrality of the gospel in conversations about sexuality. She's pretty solid. In the webinar, Jackie talked about how the gospel relates to sexuality, and then she responded to a bunch of text-in questions from the live audience. It was very interesting. So now it was a 90-minute webinar, and there were many points that really made me zone in. And one of them, just one of them, I think relates to you and how maybe you could be helped at your, you know, while you're doing the, you know, at home on schooling life. She says the following with caution because, uh, and she said this, it sounds so simple. So, but hear her out. She said, you need to love your Bible. You need to engage with it, not to check off a box and not to do the right Christian thing, but to really understand God, yourself, your world, and the world to come. Jackie continues, she said, the Bible has so much wisdom in it that we really need, that we really need. Even on TikTok, there's so many alternative suggestions for what we're supposed to know and believe and champion. And if all you're drinking is all these alternative anti-biblical views, you can't even discern or figure out if they're anti-biblical, because you haven't even been in your Bible yourself. So uh, if there's, and she says it very loving, there's not a guilt thing, like she's really quality, right? Very kind. If there's anything she says young people need is to love their Bible. Truly, she says that. That's what's going to carry them through this sometimes dark time. So that's a good word. I really appreciated that. And so SCA, please allow me to leave with you one verse from scripture. It was actually sent to me by somebody at 7.08 in the morning last week. And I assume they were just reading their Bible and they just thought they'd send it to me because it kind of, it hit or it meant something. They read it and it really stuck because I, they were thinking of you. You know, there's the fellow kind of SCA community and they sent it to me. You know, people, you guys, some of you guys email me um, pretty regularly and I appreciate that. You know, Colossians 3.16, Colossians, little book in the New Testament. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16. Let me say it again. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. There's so much there I could go on. But let me say this about that. You know, the early Christians, I don't know if you knew this, they only had the Old Testament. They didn't have the New Testament yet. Their stories and teachings about Christ were memorized, and they were passed on from person to person. Sometimes the teachings were set to music. Pretty cool kind of a, maybe the origin of worship music. So just a suggestion if you're not reading reading the Bible, why don't you um, read the book of John, fourth book in the New Testament, kind of two-thirds-ish way through the Bible. Learn about the life of Christ, one chapter just before you go to bed. You know, don't make it a guilty big deal. Just when you finally put your phone down, one chapter in John. And think about that as you fall asleep. Be pretty cool. You know, if you did that, you're going to see some things. You're going to see some authentic faith, like what real faith is, not faith that's not attractive. Like, a, like you'll go, that's cool. You're going to see moral boundaries. You're going to see an other's first kind of heart, serving people, like caring for others in a real way, not a selfish way. You're going to see some spiritual disciplines. You're going to see pretty healthy friendships. You're going to see an ultimate authority. You know, that really brings our soul kind of in order of like, okay, who's the boss here? Like, who can call the shots instead of just chaos all the time? You're going to see an ultimate authority. And you're going to see tons of wise choices. You absolutely are if you study the life of Christ. So, hey, on behalf of me, Mrs. Tuckwood, Mrs. Lennox, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. We're, we're here. Okay? We're here for you guys. So that's it for me. Have a great week, SCA. Miss you guys.